Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel Houseplanty Goodness and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So you're one of those people that really likes digging into the information, like actually physically like having a book in your hands, whether or not it's an ebook or a physical book, and you're looking for some more information from some of the experts out there in terms of how you can care for your houseplants. Have I got a really interesting video for you today? And this is a bit of a sidestep from my usual content, which is usually involving looking at plants or looking at some of the trends or some of the science behind it. It's kind of similar along those lines. But for the first time ever on my channel, this is a plant book review video. And I've been waiting to do this for a while because I've had three of the four books for a while, but the the fourth book, which I'll talk about in just a minute, has only just come out. Depends on when this video is going to come out. So it's either just about to come out or has just come out, basically. But now that I have all four that I want to talk about, let's dive into this a bit more. So the four books that I'm going to be reviewing for you today, just to give you a bit of an understanding of kind of what my thoughts were, if you were thinking of getting any of these, you can kind of see what you might be in for. So the first one we're going to be looking at is uh, Fantastically Pink Colours, uh, a book called, and I might have to flip the screen I've realised for this now, but this is Horta's Curious by Michael Perry, and you might know him on Instagram as Mr. Plant Geek, possibly one of the nicest people out there, but I'll touch on that in just a minute. Then we've got the Plant Rescuer book, and uh, what was like the, the kind of side title, the book your house plants want you to read, and this is from Sarah the Plant Rescuer on Instagram for the people in the know. The other one is Enid's book from NSC Tropical, and it's Welcome to the Jungle, which again, this is a book that was much anticipated by a lot of people, and a lot of people rushed out to get this. And then finishing off with the book that I was talking about that has either just come out or is just about to come out, depending on when I post this video, which is Legends of the Leaf by Jane Perone from On the Ledge podcast. But yeah, without further ado, let's look at each of the books separately. And what I'll be doing for most of the books is maybe giving you a bit of a peek on the inside on some of the amazing illustrations or photos that some of these books have got. I'll talk to you a bit more about what I know about the authors and kind of why they have gone forward to write a book, what makes them the kind of expert essentially in the field. Not that I think most of them would actually call themselves experts, but some of them probably would. But uh, I think, I think, I might be wrong about this. I don't think anybody's a botanist. I might be wrong with kind of how Michael Perry, so the Mr. Plant Geek, and Jane Perone would classify themselves because I know they have done studies in the field. I don't think Enid or Sarah have got a horticultural background, so to speak, academically. I might be wrong, and I'm sure that a lot of people that are watching these are avid fans of all four of these individuals, and I'm sure you will tell me. But let's dive into Michael Perry's book, Autos Curious. So Michael Perry, or Mr. Plant Geek on Instagram, has been around for a long, long time. If I'm not mistaken, he used to work for Morgan and Thompson's, and uh, and by long, long time, not to make Michael kind of seem ancient. He's a very young and vibrant person, especially in the community. Possibly, if you ever have a chance to come across Michael, one of the nicest people in the community hands down. And I think that pretty much goes for most of these individuals. I know Sarah personally, Jane personally, at least kind of over calls and all of these things. Michael personally, in terms of I also met him as well in person. The only person I have never met, but again, I've heard great things from everybody that have, is Enid. I would love to get to know Enid and, and, and kind of talk to her, even if it is kind of virtually, because obviously states and based in the UK. But yeah, 
with Michael Perry, been around for a while, as I said. He used to work for Morgan and Thomas, Morgan and Stanley, Morgan and Thomas. I always get those wrong. I think it's Morgan and Thomas. And um, I think he was part of the original team that did the ketchup and fries or ketchup and chips plant, which was a hybrid of kind of tomato plant on the top and potato plant in the bottom. Michael was also originally, I think some of his heritage is Greek, if I'm not mistaken, not, not Greek, Cypriot, one of the two basically. So we've got that in common as well. But he's also done some great merch on his website that is kind of botanical names that might sound a bit rude. They are spectacular, go check it out. But um, yeah, so I was expecting a very kind of loud and in your face book, and he did not disappoint. I loved this. This was absolutely amazing. <laughs> Favorite color, neon green. We're doing well, as well as the neon pink. This is great. But this is the kind of book that essentially, if you wanted to get introduced to some plants that you might have never have heard of, this is great because. And I'm kind of looking at the contents here just to refresh myself because I've read these books at different times over the last few months. So you've got certain plants and it's interesting, even the, the kind of categories that he's given on the book. So plants behaving badly, mistaken identities, the greater good, the superheroes and X-rated. So plants behaving badly, you're kind of looking at things that might be carnivorous or like it talks about a pyromaniac plant as well. So these are really, really cool plants that you might have never have heard of before. The good thing is as well, there are beautiful, beautiful illustrations throughout all of the book. I think it's predominantly illustrations. I don't think it's necessarily pictures at all. And like for instance, they've got the most painful plant and it's not going to be all about house plants, but exceptionally interesting. It's also got the origins of the plant or where they can be found. Very, very, very cool. And yeah, I mean, obviously, as I was mentioning before, the t-shirts the that he's got is the X-rated plants. So some of these might be, right, <laughs> the colony of nudists plant. So it's a plant that looks like a whole bunch of naked people on it. These are great and it's it's kind of, if you really geek out about kind of plants and getting to see some interesting plants or plants that have special kind of growing conditions or appearances or things that they do, this is a fantastic book. Pretty much all of these books, and I won't say it for all of them, they are great coffee table books as well. They are quite visually pleasing in terms of their covers. I've got the hardbacks for all of them and uh, they're quite visually pleasing to just have on your either on your coffee table or up on display somewhere, they are fantastic. But, um, and I will say this, sorry, I should have said this. This isn't sponsored by any of the authors, basically. Great, great book in terms of if you want to learn a bit more about some plants that you might have not heard of. And I've made some trusty notes so I don't forget things. So this book, as I mentioned, does kind of look at plants at a whole spectrum, but you're looking at things that are carnivorous. You're looking at plants that have amazing survival skills and you kind of delve into a bit more and finding out about how some of these extraordinary plants have kind of evolved for their surroundings. And one thing I will say about Michael is that he's very good at kind of combining the notion of kind of botanical information with the kind of idea of storytelling, which is kind of a, a special treat to have because a lot of a lot of us, if you've ever had to explain anything botanical to anybody who's not into plants, <laughs> you and me have all seen those expressions on the faces where they slightly glaze over and just go, oh, not interested and none of this is going in. This is a great book, even for people that are really not into horticulture, to kind of get a good, interesting introduction. This is one that you could imagine being on your coffee table and somebody who's really not into plants opening this up and just kind of go, oh, this is quite an interesting read. So very, very cool. The next book I want to talk about is Sarah's book. So and I don't think I've ever knew Sarah's last name. So Sarah Gerard, I'm assuming it's Gerard, Sarah Gerard Jones. And <laughs> spotting the theme of bright colored books. And not only is this a nice bright yellow, but it's also got bright blue and the inside, sorry. I am easily pleased. So 
Oh, bright colors. Most of my friends are just like, you are such an magpie. You get distracted so easily by looking at shiny things. True, by the way. <laughs> but Thera's book is different, very different from Matthew's, uh, Matthew's? Very different from Michael's book because Sarah goes on to kind of really delve into that kind of nature that a lot of houseplants at the moment are kind of turning into kind of a throwaway culture. And she kind of addresses things that a lot of people are aware of, but maybe don't want to be talking about. Like one of the first things that she talks about, the myth of the perfect plant. And it's this valuable information to kind of read. This might be slightly different to what I was talking about before with Michael's book. This is going to be something that you're going to have on your coffee book, a coffee table, and somebody's going to pick it up and just kind of go, ooh, interesting, because Sarah's really good at talking to both people that have been in the community and have got houseplants. I'll say snap on my mic, have got house plants for a long period of time, but also the kind of people that are just starting off, people that might be stressing about having a perfect house plant and the kind of notion that that perfect house plant doesn't really exist. Plants generally, if you look at them out in nature, aren't very rarely are they ever pristine because there's other parameters around them. These plants will adapt to your household conditions. She also goes on to explain things like when plants need to be watered and talking about aspects like dormancy and signs of to look out for if plants are going to be easy or difficult. She also goes in and shows you specific plants and goes in a bit more in detail about those plants. Sarah's book doesn't have illustrations as far as I can remember. It's mainly pictures, but they are beautifully done and very visually pleasing as well. So very, very cool. She gives her own kind of experiences with a lot of these plants. And part of the background with Sarah is that she's been rescuing plants for a while. And that's why she's called the Plant Rescuer Online. She will take those plants that kind of look like they're struggling and they're dying or might end up in the bin and take them home and rescue them and give them a new lease of life. And usually like a few months or a year later, they are thriving in her care. And it's good that people like Sarah exist because it does remind us all to kind of really look into not having that throwaway kind of mentality. And if you're going to get rid of plants, maybe don't put them uh, in the bin or compost them, maybe see if somebody else who's going to be happy to care for that plant you can kind of gift it to them or sell it to them and all of these things. So, but there's things like diagrams that you can easily follow and kind of see what you need to be addressing in the different scenarios. Sarah is also one of those individuals that I've had the pleasure, as I said, to getting to know her over calls predominantly. I don't think I've actually, it's really hysterical. Me and Sarah have crossed paths in a lot of events, but never at the same time. And I cannot believe she was at the last plant swap in London, which was the only plant swap that I was not able to attend to. So Sarah, if you're watching this, we do need to meet up in person at some point. I know we both want to, so it will happen eventually. But um, it was a complete and utter joy reading this book because it touches on a lot of really important topics. And as that kind of secondary title, I'm assuming it's a secondary title. I'm assuming the plant rescuer is the main title and the secondary title is the book your houseplant wants you to read is kind of the big key point here as well. And it's good because it can span both. It can span the people that, like all of us, who have cared for plants for a long period of time, but it also speaks a lot to those people that are starting off. So this potentially for me, I think would be a great gift to give somebody, because we've all heard it from kind of friends and families, just like, you've got the green thumb and I don't have the green thumb. And we all know that that is a bit rubbish, basically, that anybody could have the quote unquote green thumb. You just need to learn along the way. And I think Sarah's book is quite powerful in kind of educating people on things that they need to learn in order to care for a plant. And again, coming back, I don't want to belabor the point, but it's that kind of avoiding that kind of throwaway mentality when it comes to plants that might not bring you joy anymore as well. Very, very cool. And Sarah has got an amazing Instagram. Do check it out. She has got the most beautiful all grass, all glass, 
greenhouse. And I had seen it and I was like, oh, I want that. But I'm worried about how it's going to fare really, really well for her, apparently. She's had it for over a year now, I think. And might even be two at this point. Oh, pandemic. Everything merges into one. But And I think she has got succulents or cacti. I think it's cacti in there as well. But very, very cool. And Sarah's kind of mind-blowing in the way that she will kind of look at things. Because sometimes she will look to go, mm, you might want to question that a bit more. So there was a point, and I can't remember what plant it was, she took it out kind of in the wintertime to deal with the pests, a tropical house plant outside to deal with the pests. Because her reasoning behind it is, and I think it might have been one of the holiday cactuses, her reasoning behind it is the pests will die before the plant struggles too much. Yes, you're going to have to deal with a struggling plant afterwards, but you've also potentially dealt with the pests. And I know it kind of maybe goes against the grain, but I like because she's pioneering in the way that she thinks with these things and she questions, she doesn't take things for granted. And I think that comes across quite well in her book. So definitely one to check out. Moving on to Enid's book and it's Welcome to the Jungle. And Enid probably needs no introduction online, especially if you're in the US. And I think the majority of us that are not in the US have at least heard of Enid at some point or another. She's potentially mentioned in some of Kaylee Ellen's videos, in Summer Rain Oaks videos, and people that have been collecting the rare tropical houseplants for a while are aware of Enid. She herself, I think, is a bit more of the kind of most well-known kind of rare plant collectors. And I am not going to try to pronounce Enid's last name. Offalter? I say this and then I try to pronounce it. I am really sorry, Enid, if you ever watch this. If I've butchered your last name, I am sorry, I get this. I've got a very long Greek name as well and nobody can ever pronounce it properly, so apologies. I did try, but um, very, very, very cool book. This is probably going to be more aimed, again, most of these books, as I said, great for a coffee table in terms of they look pretty, but this is one that if you're an avid fan, predominantly of kind of aroids, this is going to be one that you're going to want to pick up as well. And it was really interesting because I re-picked this up again before I started filming this video. And I'd read it a while back now. And uh, it turns out that some of the plants that I just recently got on my Equigenera second hole from the pop-up have been in here as well. So I'm just like, ooh, yes, let's have a look at what Enid has to say about this as well. So it's really interesting because what Enid did well in this book is give people some of the advice that she has experienced whilst growing some of these plants for probably a lot longer than any one of us has ever owned these plants for. So Enid's been doing this for years. So she has had some of these plants in her collection for a very long period of time. And it's really invaluable to get that kind of level of information. It's similar to my plant review series, where I think the reason why people enjoy it as much as they do is because they get some experiences of people that have had it for a while and they can kind of go, okay, so this is something that kind of works and it works long term. So maybe something to worth considering trying. But, um, and I think Enid's one is another one that does have pictures, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So it's Sarah's and Enid's that have got pictures rather than illustrations. But she talks a bit generally about how plants are within the home and what you need to do, things like quarantining plants. Again, all of these things that we're aware of, but she goes in a lot more detail. And I think the really interesting thing about Enid's book, so I'm pretty sure, yes, Enid is the only one who's also got a plant store herself. And she's been selling plants for years as well. So it's really interesting if anybody kind of likes to peek behind the curtain, Enid's book's really interesting for that because it gives you that experience that somebody who's been growing and selling plants for a long period of time knows and kind of intrinsically does. So how cool would it be that if you were struggling with one of your plants or if you wanted some information, you could just quickly pick up the phone or write an email to somebody who's a plant nursery and they would come back to you with answers because very rarely would they <laughs> take the time to do it necessarily. But you're getting that kind of information from Enid's book, which is super cool. And she talks about some of the plants. And this is the thing as well, like she goes on about some of the rare plants that we've got on the market. So the Anthera Wendlingeri, I always butcher that, 
We've got the Monstera Burley Marks Flame. She talks about the Monstera Albo, the Debaya, the Oblique, all of these things that you would not normally get in another book. So she talks about the Philodendron Pink Princess. And yes, there are books and online resources that have come out since in the last few years because so many people got it that that's become a bit more mainstream. But she talks about Esmeral Dens. I've great. Uh, completely agree with everything she says, by the way. It wouldn't be Esmeral Dens before anybody asked. <laughs> but yeah, it is a very, very cool book because she goes into that much detail. She also has, and I'm looking at it now, she's got how rare something might be, how easy or less easy it might be, and kind of the growing environment that she found has worked well with this. And let me see if I can find the one plant that when I got the Anthurium Frederick Stalii, I thought it was that one that she said has given her trouble. And you can tell where uh, some of her humor comes into this. And I think She's obviously got a very cool, very sarcastic, I think, sense of humour, which I live in the UK and I'm Greek. Sarcasm runs through my veins on a regular basis. But let me see if I can find it and I'll read something out for you because it's very, very entertaining. Found it. It's the Anthurium cuticuensis, which is one that... She's actually said has given her a lot of trouble and I'll bring it up and hopefully this is an issue with me showing, but, um, and she did mention that it's just that it's like chicken feet and you can't unsee that now. And I'm just like, oh, you are right. I cannot unsee that. But the growing environment for this, and I'll just read the little snippet. She was just like, this finicky anthurium likes indirect light, high temperature, well-draining soil, and temperatures below 75 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So it is in Fahrenheit, not in Celsius, but that makes sense because Enid is based in the States. It prefers lower nighttime temperatures of around 65 to 70 Fahrenheit. Water only, <laughs> this is where it gets sarky, water only with the tears of an angel on a Tuesday on a full moon while standing on one foot and singing Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. Didn't I say it was finicky? Grow it in a terrarium or a grow tank. You can purchase it online. So I love it because it's it really does show some of her personality shining through, which is when I read that, I was in stitches, basically. Maybe I'm I'm the one that finds things funny in the botanical world, basically. But I think there's more people like me out there, hopefully. But very, very cool book, nonetheless. Definitely one to look into getting. I'm pretty sure all of these books are on Amazon. I'll leave links down below, basically, if you want to check them out. But yeah, let's move on to the final book, shall we? So the final book is Jane Barone's book from On The Ledge podcast, and it is called Legends of the Leaf. And again, I'll see if I need to flip the screen around. Very, very cool book. This is the only one I think I've got that has got a, a dust cover and it's got, obviously they're all hardback and it's got a very pleasing green foil on the inside. And one of the reasons why I said this book is coming out or has is about to come out and why you might be asking, have I got it? Is because Jane was doing kind of essentially what is crowdfunding for books. And I think it was from a website, if I'm not mistaken, called Unbound. And we all kind of pledged to essentially think of it as like kind of pre-ordering the book. And then if there's enough, they will go into production, which is great to say that it did. And so we've got those early releases because that's the point of the Unbound uh, situation. And uh, this should be hitting the markets. I think its release date is the 27th of April. As I said, don't know when this is going to necessarily come out. But very, very cool. Jane is the other one, like Michael Perry, who have got illustrations in their books rather than just images, basically. And I'll give you an example. So the Seropegia woody eye, which is a string of hearts. And it's really cool because Jane was actually mentioning this, and I almost missed this as well. Very often do you just get illustrations of plants like this that are kind of basic and you kind of get the gist of the shape of the plant. But they really did kind of pay attention to what they were doing with the illustrations on this because it's got the little boblets that grow in. It's got the little chandelier. 
It's got the little chandelier type flowers that are obviously part of the Seropegia family. Absolutely amazing. It's a very, very cool book that kind of gives a tiny bit of instructions on the kind of general house plant care, but then goes in to talk about some of the kind of biggest house plants on the market. And I'll give you a quick rundown. You're looking at things like the aloe vera, the aspidistra, the diehard fans of the On the Ledge podcast know the association there with the cast iron plants and the aspidistra. The string of hearts, the spider plant, the jade plant, the string of pearls, the leopard lily, the Venus flytrap, the devil's ivy, the, the kind of pothos. All of these things has got like some hoyas, it's got the spathophyllum, it's got zizi plants, it's got lithops, it's got the Monsera deliciosa. Very, very cool because what Jane has done on each one of these sections, I think it's pretty much on each one of these sections, is she's gone into a very, very deep dive on each one of the plants. The, the background that Jane has with a lot of her kind of podcast guests as well is that Jane Throne knows a lot of people that are experts, very unique experts in each one of these fields or each one of these plants or genuses specifically. So it's very, very interesting to read a book from her as well, because she obviously does the what a lot of the other books might do, which is the care guide, so the light, the temperature, the water, the humidity, the pest, the substrate, the propagation, the feeding, all of these things. But it's quite nice because Jane has also been a great proponent of some of the older houseplant books as well. And some of people on my channel that have been here for a while have seen when I've had uh, Haseon's uh, I think it's Haseons, Haseons, I don't know how it's pronounced exactly, but the Houseplant Expert book for, I don't know if I put it on my Instagram or if I've mentioned it on a video, but somebody recently was getting rid of a whole bunch of books and I think I have got the whole Haseon series now, not just the Houseplant one. And I'm just, they're just like, do you want these? I'm just like, I don't have half of the plants that these books are talking about, but yes, then I've got the set, it's great. And yeah, they're a bit tattered, but uh, sorry, massive tension there, but Jane was one of those people that introduced a lot of us to those kind of older books as well. So it's nice to see kind of her bringing out her own book. And I know that this has been a labor of love for Jane and it's been in the works for a long, long time. And Jane, if you watch this, I really hope you get some rest now that it's finally published and it's out there and hopefully people are loving it. Great, great book. Definitely. It is the smallest one size-wise out of all of them, which means it makes it very easy for this to not take up an awful lot of space on coffee tables. Because that's the other thing as well, that all these coffee table books, they're just like, it's a coffee table book, but they're usually so huge that it's just like, unless I've got a massive coffee table, I can't put it on. Nice compact size. I like that. But uh, yeah, it is just a lot of really interesting information background on the plants. There's, I think if I'm not mistaken, there's also mention from the different experts, if she could kind of put that in there. There's those bespoke illustrations that were done for the book specifically. And I don't know, oh, illustrations by Helen Entwizzle. I'm so sorry if I've mispronounced that last name. You can tell I'm not great with like pronunciation of things. English, to be fair, is not my first language. It's one of six languages that I speak. So cut me some slack, potentially. <laughs> but uh, yeah, very, very, very cool book. This is one that I've not had in my kind of possession for too, too long. So I'm kind of still working my way through this. But I am the weirdo that reads this as bedtime reading. Um, before I fall asleep, as I did with most of these books and anybody who's done reading hardbacks whilst they're trying to fall asleep and smack themselves in the face, <laughs> know that the struggle is real. <laughs> but exceptionally interesting, exceptionally, exceptionally interesting as well. And she talks about, and I, for instance, I've just opened on the Venus flytrap section here, there's mention of other maintenance tasks, which you don't get with a lot of other books, danger signs, toxicity, display, cultivars as well, and things that you might also want to try. So Jane really went the extra mile with creating this book and being able to bring it out for all of us to enjoy. This is probably, for me, I would imagine, because there's so many of the plants that everybody can get, 
again, it's probably going to talk to both the avid houseplant collectors who are probably going to learn more than they might think from this book. Because when I was reading the Monstera and the CS section, I was like, I think I know most of these things. I've been dealing with this for a long time now. I'm just like, oh no, some of the things that were in here I had never, ever heard of before. I won't spoil the surprise, get the book. But yeah, it's very, very cool, both for the people that are really, really into plants. But again, this is another great one that I think for people that are just getting into house plants to kind of discover. Jane did that really good balance of being able to speak to both of those audiences without dumbing things down or sounding patronizing to either. And that is something that I think is very difficult to achieve, especially when you talk to a wider audience. I work in marketing. I know about tonal issues, trust me. But uh, yeah, very, very cool book. And I'm really curious to see how this is going to land with all of the people out there. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a firm favorite, the same way that the other three have kind of become household names now. So yeah, that's what I wanted to say about this. Let me do some final thoughts and then we can wrap up. So my final thoughts for this, and it seems really weird that I'm doing a book review on a plot channel, but there's some great books that came out. And I think pretty much all of these came out this year, if I'm not mistaken, in, in the last 12 months. So a great year for some houseplant literature to be coming out. And all four of the authors have done a great job at collating all of the information, presenting it in a way that should be approachable for most people, especially based on their audience, as I said. So for instance, like Enid's maybe might be a bit more for the people that are getting into the rarer house plants, but she talks to that audience. The others are a bit of a mix of both newbies and kind of established kind of collectors, and they do it really well as well. They are beautifully done. They are also very, very beautiful books to look at as well. As I mentioned, you can have it kind of on your coffee table or up on display on a bookshelf. Great. But it's nice that some of these, and I'm pretty sure most of them would cringe with me saying this, some of these figureheads of our community really are bringing out their own books that we can all enjoy, not only for ourselves, but also potentially getting as gifts for some of our loved ones. Because there's a lot of things that you can learn from a lot of these books. But yeah, I'd be curious, have any of you read any of these books? Do you own any of these books? What would your review be of the books that you've got? Put it down below in the comments. I'm sure other people would want to know as well. And also let me know if you like this type of content as well, because I can occasionally bring in some of these more informational videos where we look at things that are not directly the plant, but are peripheral to that as well. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. If you did, I do encourage you. I'm in the big drive this year to try and hopefully grow this channel. So if you did enjoy this, give it a big like. If you haven't subscribed, there's a lot of people that watch my videos that have never subscribed. Please subscribe. It makes it easier for me to get content out to you. And if you think this is valuable to anybody that you might know, share. All of these things help to hopefully grow the channel and we can build the community even larger. But yeah, enough from me. Hopefully you enjoy the rest of your day and I hope to see you here very, very soon. Thanks. Bye.